Justice League was definitely a polarizing movie. Some fans loved seeing their favorite heroes team up no matter what, and some were definitely a little more picky. Either way, it's impossible to deny the movie was a massive spectacle. When making a movie that huge, sometimes the little details end up slipping through the cracks. From continuity to confusing moments, even Justice League isn't immune to a couple of mistakes here and there. Oof, that mustache though. Or should we say, that lack of mustache. It's a pretty well-known story by now that Henry Cavill was not allowed to shave his Mission Impossible mustache in order to reprise his role as the notoriously clean-shaven Man of Steel in Justice League. So the filmmakers found a way around it, or at least they thought they did. While CGI has become so impressive over the last few years that sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between animation and reality, in the case of Henry's stash, fans were not quite so easily fooled. They immediately noticed that something was just off about Superman's mouth. Specifically, that his top lip looks like it belongs anywhere but on his actual face. While it is actually pretty impressive on the part of the animators that they were able to animate it out, unfortunately it just wasn't quite subtle enough for a 21st century movie audience. Now, when you reimagine the often mocked for his wimpiness character of Aquaman into the anything but wimpy Jason Momoa, there's bound to be some big changes. And while superhero movies are generally geared towards a younger male audience, with that casting in mind, this new and improved Aquaman might just be a little something special for the ladies. Which could explain how there seems to be some continuity errors with when Aquaman has his his shirt on or off throughout Justice League. Specifically, during the scene in which Superman is resurrected. When he first puts Superman into the Genesis chamber on the Kryptonian ship, Aquaman is totally clothed in his cool new metallic armor. But in another shot just after, we can see him in the background, sans shirt. Now, maybe he just got hot and took off his armor to cool down. Or maybe it was just a regular old continuity error. There was another Aquaman-related blunder that is a little less easy on the eyes, and fans everywhere picked up on right away. We know that his home is Atlantis, which is in the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean, surrounded by salt water, sea life, and creatures of the deep. But in the Justice League scene in which Wonder Woman uses her lasso of truth on him, and he begins revealing his more inner feelings in front of the Flash, he gets a little self-conscious. He threatens the Flash by telling him that if he tells anyone about what Aquaman Man has confessed that the Flash will meet every piranha he knows. Which is a pretty fun threat, except for one detail. Piranhas are located in fresh water in South America, lakes and rivers to be specific, and never make it into the ocean. How many piranhas does Aquaman know, really? We know the Flash is definitely the youngest of the Justice League crew, but one weird moment in the movie might just be pushing his age a little too far. When Cyborg gives the Flash, aka Barry Allen, a fake military identity and background, he didn't seem to put too much thought into exactly how old to make the young man. Young being the operative word. If you pause at just the right moment, you'll notice that Cyborg has made Barry's birthday November 6th, 2010, making our friend The Flash a mere seven years old at the time the movie came out. While we'll grant that he looks young, we're pretty sure the military has an age restriction for young recruits that is a little more strict than a recent kindergarten graduate. Like covering a contractually obligated mustache on a character whose mouth has to, you know, move, creating seriously intricate fake tattoos that look real and are perfectly consistent over months of shooting must be a pretty daunting task for the artists behind them. Even more so when the character you're tattooing is half submerged in water for a huge part of the time. Which is why it's understandable that in Justice League, Aquaman's tattoos seem to have a bit of a mind of their own. But seriously, you'd think they could take the time to make sure that they at least look kinda permanent. In one scene during a conversation with Batman, Aquaman goes from having three rows of triangles across his packs to having four without ever leaving the room. And at the very end of that same scene, when he jumps into the water, he's missing the bottom section entirely. 
Some of the biggest errors in movies that feature superheroes and supervillains happen with the writers, just trying to keep track of who has what power and when. This happens in Justice League, specifically when it comes to the Parademons. Supposedly, these guys have the very creepy and dangerous ability to smell fear, which is the device that is used to finally take down Steppenwolf in the end. And yet, as is pretty common across the board in these types of movies, this particular ability only comes into play when it works with the overall plot. Plot. In an earlier scene, as Steppenwolf and the aforementioned Parademons are making life difficult for the employees of Star Labs, Batman and the Flash are close by, and the Flash tells Batman that he can't be part of this fight, because he is scared of guns, people, and bugs. How come the Parademons aren't able to smell his fear, given that they're in such close proximity? When we first meet our heroes at the beginning of the movie, we're given a glimpse into what they've been up to lately. Wonder Woman has been doing her thing, which is fighting bad guys and taking down terrorists. We see her foiling the plot of some spiffily dressed bad guys who have taken a bunch of hostages and plan to destroy a good chunk of London. She bursts into the room right in the nick of time, and manages to take down the handful of villains with ease. When the last one standing looks at her in disbelief, he asks her the semi-insulting question. What are you? Wonder Woman replies, I'm a believer, but wait. Wait, what? A believer in what? It's clearly a catchy line, but doesn't really make any sense whatsoever. What does she believe in? Miracles? Santa Claus? Speaking of that Wonder Woman scene, it seemed to cause the filmmakers a bit of trouble, as there are a couple more details that just don't make much sense. For example, the number of assassins involved in this terrorist plot. In the beginning of the scene, we can clearly see that there are nine bad guys, bad guying around in there. But over the course of Wonder Woman's takedown, she only defeats four of them. The remaining five are nowhere to be found. Now, it's most likely that they simply cut the extended fight scene for time. But also, where did they go? If they knew what was good for them, they'd probably just have run away. So we'll assume that is the case and move on. Another problem with this particular scene is that the English terrorist names their plan to blow up four city blocks, which isn't a term the British use at all. So it sounds pretty out of place in this context. Now, we won't pretend to be big gearheads over here at Screen Rant, and while we know that we're more movie buffs than mechanics, we're pretty sure we can tell the difference between a moped and a motorcycle using our extremely advanced powers of basic human eyesight. The same cannot be said, apparently, for the folks over there behind the scenes of Justice League. Later on in the movie, the Parademons have descended on Russia, and we see them infiltrate the home of a Russian family. In the first shot of the exterior of the house, you can clearly clearly see a small moped against the wall. But in the next scene, it has apparently taken steroids and become a big old motorcycle. But then again, as the family flees, they run past it and once again, it's back to being a moped. And that's not even it. As one of the kids looks back at their home, it's a motorcycle again. Magic. Keeping track of vehicles in general seem to have given the creators of Justice League a little bit of trouble, as we'll see again with a couple of seemingly magical police cars. First off, when Superman loses his memory and ends up in a huge battle with the other members of Justice League, he takes the opportunity to chuck Batman straight into a police car, giving it a massive dent in the side and causing a big blue chunk to fall off the bottom. And yet, right after, when Lois Lane shows up to calm down the violently confused used Man of Steel, the huge blue section of the car has totally disappeared. Aquaman spends a good majority of his time in the deep ocean, and because of that, he must encounter some pretty gross stuff from time to time. From pollution to creepy deep sea creatures, we're sure he's no stranger to a mysterious substance every now and then. Maybe that's why he seems totally unfazed by the unexplained green goo that is all over his hands, after he saves the fisherman from the tempestuous storm. After his heroic act, he heads over to the local bar to chill out with a whiskey. When he gets his drink, he knows notices that his hands have this mystery gloop all over them, and as a result, the glass does as well. But in the next shot, when he grabs the whiskey bottle, and surprise, no more green stuff. It's totally disappeared, with no explanation. We get that sometimes, if you have a bit of a crush on someone, it might make you a little bit shy and hesitant to reach out to them. We get that, we do. But in Batman's case, there's one scene in Justice League that really could have been made a whole lot easier if he had just put his feelings aside and reached out to Wonder Woman. With Superman dead and the entire planet under siege by a terrifying alien race, Bruce Wayne decides against reaching out to the literal demigod that is Wonder Woman for help 
and instead spends way too much time trying to figure out the mother box symbols on his own. She could have easily told him what the symbols mean, saving a ton of time, and not to mention a bunch of human lives. Bruce, my dude, you're 40. Put your pride aside and pick up a phone. Send a text, throw a battering, ask for help, it's okay. Speaking of Bruce Wayne and his somewhat confusing ways, what is going on with his facial hair as well? We know that Justice League went through a bit of production hell, and that's fair, but continuity seems to really have suffered in all of the confusion, making the movie itself even more confusing. During a scene in which Bruce tells Wonder Woman about his fears about an impending attack, they sit in the darkened bat cave, and he's rocking some very visible 5 o'clock shadow. And yet, moments later when they walk out of the cave, he's totally clean shaven. We're 99% sure that his facial hair wasn't an illusion caused by dim cave lighting, but it's highly unlikely that he paused their conversation to run into the bathroom and have a quick shave. If there's anyone in the universe that is the absolute and total authority on superhero garb, it's Edna Mode from The Incredibles. And what is Edna's number one rule? That's right, no capes. We really wish the creators of Justice League had remembered this one essential rule when they designed the Amazonian's costumes, because there is one scene in particular in which Hippolyta's cape would have basically gotten her killed, and only by the magic of CGI did she escape unharmed. When Steppenwolf and the Parademons open the Mother Box and attack the Amazonians, Hippolyta swipes the box and makes an extremely valiant attempt to trap Steppenwolf. But as she manages to slide under the closing gate just in the nick of time, the way her cape is flailing around behind her would totally have gotten stuck, but suddenly appears in front of her and she gets away miraculously. With so many reshoots, the costume department was obviously a huge mess, and it shows. Case in point. Watch Wonder Woman during the fight scene with Steppenwolf in the tunnels underneath Gotham, when her armor appears, disappears, and reappears totally at random. First, if you look at the scene, you'll see her shield is nowhere to be found. But then, as she yells at Batman to get the Flash out of the tunnel before it floods, boom! Shield! Right there in her left arm. Then five seconds later, the shield appears strapped to her back, and she is now holding her sword in her right hand, totally out of nowhere. We knew Wonder Woman was good, but we had no idea she was summon your weapons out of thin air good. While we know the outfits superheroes wear are often made of special materials resistant to the elements, their people clothes are usually just that, clothes. This is apparently not the case, however, for Superman's pants. During the scene when Superman is resurrected by Aquaman, he is still dressed in the normal blue suit that he was buried in. During the resurrection process, a giant blast fires out of him, completely disintegrating his shirt, and yet his pants remain totally intact. This may have just been another opportunity to show off the actor's superhero physique. And yes, it is a family movie, but realistically, the pants probably would have been destroyed as well. Not only that, but he comes out of the water and arrives at his memorial, he is totally dry, not a hair out of place, and literally no sign that he was just brought back to life submerged in a pool of water. It must be quite the task to match up scenes that were shot during the original shooting schedule, and ones that were redone months and months later. We've already seen examples of that, with Ben Affleck's magical disappearing, reappearing beard. But one of the most painfully obvious of these time-lapse errors has to do with Barry Allen. In the scene where Barry meets Bruce Wayne for the first time, you can really, really tell that half of the scene was reshot, and then cut together with the original, as Barry's hair changes from moment to moment. It seems to grow visibly over the course of their conversation. Maybe everything about the Flash moves faster than the rest of us, including the speed at which his hair grows. But in that case, he'd probably look more like Tom Hanks at the end of Castaway before the third act of Justice League. The Lois Lane and Superman relationship is one that we will always be the first to cheer on, but something really weird happens in Justice League that raises a couple of questions about our gal Lois. After Superman has been dead and buried for a while, he gets resurrected, and his memory restored with the help of the love of his life. When they finally embrace after he remembers her, she holds him close, and then tells him that he smells good. It's totally natural to think that the person you love smells good, but does he? After being buried in a 
grave, submerged in a murky pool, brought back to life, and then getting into a huge sweaty brawl with a bunch of people with superpowers? Does he really? Maybe an unspoken ability that Superman has is that he always smells minty fresh, but I guess we'll never know. There's one giant timeline problem that popped up in Justice League which is just impossible to ignore, especially if you also happen to see Batman v Superman. And it all has to do with the extremely disquietingly named Mother Boxes. So, in Justice League, we see Cyborg tell everyone the Mother Box awakened after Superman had died, on the actual night that it happened. He even describes it having lit up like Christmas, so he seems pretty sure of the details. But hey, Hang on! In Batman v Superman, we see Wonder Woman watching one of Lex Luthor's videos that actually shows Silas Stone working away on the box in question, which has clearly been activated and even Cyborg is in the video. As we know, this all took place a long time before Supes kicked the bucket, so something isn't quite right here. There is one more mistake from the Justice League movie that has been seriously bugging fans ever since the movie came out. And while it's not a practical error like continuity or a costume problem, it is kind of huge. When Superman does the thing that humankind has been curious about since the beginning and comes back to life after having died, Lois asks him the big question, what is death like? And instead of giving her some peace of mind or answering the question that billions have wondered over for centuries, he only says one thing, itchy. That's it, itchy, and Lois just accepts it. What does that mean? The suit he was buried in, was that what was itchy? Of course the writers of the movie don't have an answer to that question, but even a knowing smile would have been more satisfying than just itchy. Oh, Justice League, whether you love it or hate it, you can't deny that it has given us a whole bunch to talk about. What did you think of these movie mistakes? Did we miss any that stuck out to you like a sore thumb or a hidden mustache? Or do you think the movie is better left as is? Let us know down below. We hope you had fun taking this ride with us, and thanks for watching.